What's going on, Cigar Club family? Welcome back to another episode of the Cigar Club podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in and leaving your thoughts and feedback on each episode. If this is your first time, the Cigar Club podcast is where we talk about all things cigars with you, the Cigar Club family. On today's episode, we're going to be revealing your top 10 cigars of the year. These are cigars that have been rated by you, the Cigar Club family, as you smoked them throughout the year 2023. Um, as most of you know, when you're a member of the Cigar Club uh, family, you've got the opportunity to rate each cigar that you receive in your box uh, each month. And what we did is we go behind the scenes, we pull all those ratings, and uh, we list those ratings in a weighted category. So that way, if you know maybe only one or you know a few cigars of a certain one were rated, uh, that's going to be weighted against you know a hundred of a single cigar were were rated. Um, and uh, this is one of my favorite episodes that we do each year at the beginning of the year. I would say this one and then the Cigar Aficionado slash other brand or other publications top 10, top 25 of the year are probably my two favorite episodes. It's, this one in particular is really cool to go through and um, just kind of see how the cigars that we had sent over the last year stack up and, and what everyone's favorites are. I've got a couple ideas of what I think may be in the top 10. Certainly not too sure of what I'll see in the top five, although I have uh, a couple guesses that usually make their way into the top five that are yearly releases. But I'm really excited to see what everyone's rated over the last year. So if this uh, you know, is a, a way, if you maybe have never rated the cigars that you receive, certainly get it. It's not for everyone. But if you haven't, this is a good time to start doing it uh, as we are now in the year 2024. It's only January, so uh, you can start rating those cigars to contribute to next year's top 10 of 2024. Uh, but before we jump into the episode, I am currently smoking the December Customs La Fine that was made uh, with HVC out of their Nicaraguan factory. If you haven't had this cigar yet and you're still looking to after this, uh, if you sign up before February 1st, you will receive our December Customs, which I'm currently smoking. Uh, if you sign up after February 1st, you'll receive our February uh, 2024 Customs. So you still have a chance to get this one if you're interested in it. Uh, but this is a 6x52. Uh, once again, it was made at the HVC factory in Nicaragua. Uh, the wrapper is an Ecuadorian Habano 1992 seed. The binder is Nicaraguan Corojo 99 from Jalapa. And then the filler is going to be a combination of Nicaraguan Corojo 99 from Jalapa, as well as Nicaraguan Criollo 98 from Esteli. Uh, this is going to range more on that medium to full bodied side. I would say medium plus to full is probably a better uh, description of where this will land. But when we smoked this originally down, gosh, the end of 2022, when we were down in Miami, this cigar was fresh. And when I say fresh, I mean like a week fresh. So it had a lot more strength than what we currently have now, which is I'm very happy for. The, the strength is still tamed down or has tamed down, but still is a medium plus to full bodied cigar. It's just much more approachable than it was then. Uh, but you're going to get notes of spice. There's some cream, which surprisingly was not there in the original blend or the original production that we smoked when, like I said, it was a week old. So this lovely creamy aspect has come out which I think brings it down from that full bodied, full plus almost to that medium plus to full uh, cinnamon. And then one of the tasting notes that I remember getting when we initially smoked the cigar, which I'm happy is still there, is Dolce de Leche. So it's a combination of, of cinnamon uh, and like custard, really delicious. And this is uh, the first customs that we did with H HVC. And it is absolutely fantastic. So if you haven't had a chance to smoke this, go ahead. Or if you're not part of Customs, go ahead and sign up uh, before February 1st to receive La Fine. Incredible retro hail. But La Fine, uh, I guess I can explain a little bit of that, uh, is Italian for the end. And to me, it was just a perfect name for a cigar to wrap up the amazing 2023 year of Customs that we had sent out. We frankly shipped out some of my favorite customs that we have blended yet and it, it just felt as like the perfect uh capstone or bookend to uh what was an amazing 2023 for customs and uh it just i don't know there's something about the name that i just really enjoyed it felt perfect for this cigar it felt strong 
obviously it's Italian. So uh, I don't know. I guess I think of Italians as like strong. So I don't know. It was a great name for it. And I love this blend. So glad that we had the opportunity to work with Lorenzo over there at HVC uh, and uh, be able to deliver this cigar to you. But uh, without further ado, uh, let's jump into it. Now, before we do, none of these ratings are known to me. Ramsey went ahead and pulled uh, these top 10. He's got them completely hidden from me. So he's going to unveil these as I read them out, or I'm going to read them out as they're unveiled. So all of this is unknown to me. I didn't want any spoilers. I wanted this to kind of all be live reaction to it. Uh, but let's jump right into it. Coming in at number 10, let's see if this works. Coming in at number 10, we've got the Lampert 1675. Uh, this was a cigar. Let me get my stuff pulled up now that apologies here, people. Let's see when we ship this cigar. This was uh, a cigar that ended up being on a lot of uh, Instagram posts that I noticed throughout the year. Lampert had a ton of publicity over the last several years really glad to glad to see that Stam, uh stefan is uh, wonderful to work with we even shipped a customs made by lampert this year uh, so that was an incredible opportunity but the 1675 azul i believe we shipped the robusto i'm trying to pull this up here as we do it live yeah so we shipped the uh, lampert 1675 azul robusto back in uh gosh may i think I'm trying to see kind of shifted out through all out the year that I look at it now. Uh, and so, yeah, that's one that is absolutely wonderful. I love everything that Lampert produces. Uh, this is made out of their uh, Nicaraguan factory featuring an Ecuadorian wrapper, Nicaraguan binder, and Nicaraguan and Peruvian uh, tobacco. It just, I don't know. There's something about Lampert cigars that just, no matter what the blend is, find its way into my daily or not daily, but my weekly or monthly cigar rotation. I don't think there's a month that goes by that I'm not smoking a Lampert cigar, no matter what it may be. Uh, uh, so that's a great start to it. Shout out to Lampert for uh, an amazing cigar. We've shipped a multiple Lamperts over the years, so there's a good chance I may there may be another Lampert in the top uh, 10 that we've got here. So let's go ahead and jump into number nine after a wonderful start. Coming in at number nine, we've got the Sereno Taino. This is just a fantastic cigar. We've got, it's the Taino uh, Heritage. It's the blue banded one. Just, Carson has just a way of blending stories and tobacco together. All the names that Sereno Cigars come up with just do an excellent job of tying in storytelling into the name itself. So the Taino were the natives to the Dominican Republic. And so this cigar paid heritage to the native Tainos. He came out with this cigar, I believe, although time flies now, but I believe it was maybe 2001 late or 2002, or excuse me, 2021 or 2022 uh, and it just immediately, he's got the the white banded one, which is just called the Taino. Uh, and then you've got the blue banded one, which was the Taino Heritage. Two different blends. Both are phenomenal. If you haven't had a chance to smoke uh, the Taino by Sereno, go out there and do it. Chances are most of you have had the opportunity because I love including this cigar in boxes. It's just, it's so good. And at least once a year, I'd like to bring it back to just remind everyone how good that cigar is. So Awesome. Shout out to Sereno for coming in at number nine for the Cigar Club uh, family rated top 2023 cigars. All righty. And coming in at number eight is our first Cigar Club exclusive. We've got the Villiger Cigar Club exclusive that uh, we released in February. No way. Yep. February of 2023. It's amazing how time flies. Uh, this was the first ever exclusive that we have done or had done with Villager Cigars. Uh, this was a box press Toro coming in at 6x52 made at their Nicaraguan warehouse. It was a Nicaraguan Puro featuring a Nicaraguan Habano Rosado wrapper. It had Nicaraguan filler or excuse me binder from Jalapa and then the filler consisted of Nicaraguan tobacco from Esteli and Condega. I was blown away when we smoked this blend it, it had everything that I wanted in a medium cigar, maybe an inch towards that 
mild side if you're looking at like a five or a one through 10 rating with one being mild, 10 being full, five being medium. It was like a four and a half on that scale, but still medium bodied with that Nicaraguan filler in there. Creamy cedar sweetness. It was a cigar that you could approach uh, any time of the day. And I remember I posted this on Discord as I was smoking the test blends of it back in, uh, gosh, 2022 now. And it was one of the few torpedo cigars that did not fight me. Normally, when I smoke a torpedo, it, it tends to be maybe I've got to recut it after, you know, a couple inches into the cigar or just can't get the draw that I want out of it or that I normally get with a regular, you know, rounded cigar. And, but this one, the draw was impeccable. And I knew that that we had a winner when the draw on that box press torpedo was flawless. I didn't have to recut it, didn't have to touch it up. And uh, I remember posting about that. And then when people started to smoke it, uh, we saw some posts on Discord and a lot of people agreed with that. So it was really wonderful to see. And uh, happy to see that, you know, an exclusive made the top 10 here. Maybe there's some more on there. Wait and see here. But uh, thank you all. I'm so glad everyone enjoyed that cigar enough that it made the top 10. All right. So coming in at number seven, we've got the Alec Bradley SCR Toro. Now, this is a cigar that we only recently shipped uh, a few months ago. So I'm really happy to see that this made the top 10 already. That's absolutely incredible. This is a cigar that I remember smoking. Uh, Bradley reached out to me, Bradley from Alec Bradley Cigars, obviously, Bradley Rubin. He reached out to me and said, hey, we've got some of these bands of cigars that we did in the early 90s that aren't production anymore. We've got something we could do with them. You know, you guys interested? And I said, absolutely. So I remember smoking a few of those different cigars and uh, I came across the SCR Toro and absolutely blown away. So SCR stands for Select Cabinet Reserve. Uh, if you look it up online, the band is straight out of the 90s. It looks 90s. It looks vintage. And it was really cool to have the opportunity to kind of bring back, bring back this blend for a limited run. Uh, I don't know their plans for it. They may be, you know, doing a full re-release of it, but uh, maybe with new bands. But it was really cool to be able to utilize those old bands from the 90s that had been sitting around that didn't have any use for them. Uh, this cigar uh, made Origin Honduras. Uh, featuring Honduran wrapper, Indonesian binder, Nicaraguan, and Honduran filler. Uh, I have smoked multiple of these uh, since then, prior to us getting them in the last few months, and then I've smoked one or two since uh, we received them. And it's just a, I don't know, it's just a classic blend. When I think of like 90s from, cigars from the 90s, I, I just, there's a certain profile to them that I associate, and this cigar just absolutely reminds me of it. So if you haven't had a chance to smoke it, uh, please do. I think this is a cigar for everyone. Like I said, it's medium bodied. It's going to appeal to anyone's kind of smoking pleasure or preference. And I hope they do something with it. I'd love to see sort of an updated take on the bands themselves, the box works as well. I think you may be able to find them in select like five packs of uh, like vintage blends. There's a I think is the actual name for the five packs. Uh, I know there was a few of them floating around over the uh, the last year, so they may have kind of done something with that as well. But hopefully they bring it back with updated branding, updated packaging, I think could go really well. And it's it's certainly vintage cigar in my opinion. So to, to recap here, number 10, we had the Lampert 60, 70, 1675 Azul. Number nine, the Sereno Taino Heritage. Number eight, the Villager Cigar Club exclusive. Number seven, which we just talked about, was the Alec Bradley SCR Toro. Coming in at number six, it's going to be the La Paulina White Label. We shipped actually two different Vitolas of this over the course of the year. We shipped the Corona Gorda just recently as a October. Uh, and then we shipped the Toro earlier uh, in the beginning of the year in January. So... Uh, I'm not too sure particularly which Vitola this was. It could be either one of those, but still goes to show uh, how amazing this blend is. It's one of my particularly favorite morning cigars uh, that La Polina creates. Uh, it does come in at medium, so it's not just a straight Connecticut or anything like that. Uh, and I'll get into why, but it's made in their Honduran factory, featuring a Honduran wrapper. And this is why it's not just a straight, mild Connecticut, because it features Mexican San Andreas binder. So that binder... Uh, gives it a little bit more body, a little bit more umph, a little bit more characteristics than a typical Connecticut um, would. 
And then in the filler, you've got Dominican Piloto Cubano, and then you've got more Mexican San Andreas in there as well. Well, so what you get is this, uh, what I describe as white pepper spice. So it's not as strong as black pepper would be, but it's more of a subtle, mild spice. Uh, so if you've ever cooked with white pepper, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then you get this cedar notes uh, and then just an overall sweetness that uh, I attribute to the Hunter and Wrapper. Yeah, one, like I said, one of my favorite cigars. I, I think this cigar goes absolutely fantastic with a morning cup of coffee or a shot of espresso. Great way to start your day off. And that is fantastic seeing them come in at number six. So a little bit of update now that we've hit the first six here. La Fine burning absolutely beautiful. Uh, right now, it's medium plus in strength. Uh, it's certainly one that does not build up to that medium plus. It pretty much hits the ground running on that medium plus. Right now, I'm getting just nothing but dolce de leche, specifically the cinnamon portion of that. It's just a creamy, cinnamony, delicious cigar. Uh, and I do have some coffee with it. Now, last time that I smoked this cigar, I did not have coffee. And so I'm uh, curious to see kind of how this pairing goes. Normally, I would associate this cigar being maybe like lunchtime after dinner. Uh, granted, when we did smoke it down with uh, Lorenzo at his HPC uh, office, it was in the morning and we did smoke it with a Cuban coffee that had a ton of sweetened condensed milk and like three shots of espresso on top of it. So we did smoke it with coffee, I guess, but it was more of a sweetened coffee, whereas right now I'm drinking just straight black coffee. So curious to see how these two go together. And coming in at number five, breaking the top five, we have yet another Cigar Club exclusive. This is going to be our Matilde exclusive that we did uh, back in 2022. Now, some of you be wondering why the heck is it showing up on the 2023 ratings? Uh, and that's because we shipped this cigar late last year in November of 2022. So there's a good chance that uh, the majority didn't have time to smoke it over the, the cold winter months and may have not gotten to it until uh, the new year. And then we also included the cigar in, uh, for a lot of our new members that signed up through the course of 2023. We still had uh, some of these cigars left over. And so a lot of cigar um, or new Cigar Club family members had the opportunity to smoke this cigar. We also met on our website as well for retail purchase. So that's going to be why this showed up on the 2023 list, even though we released it back in uh, 2022. So this cigar was made with Matilde Cigars. Uh, Enrique is a great friend of ours. It was made down in uh, the Dominican Republic at a factory many of y'all are familiar with, uh, and that's going to be La Isla. Uh, he sent us, I remember specifically talking to Enrique, and he sent us a couple blends over, and I remember smoking this one. I think he sent maybe three blends, and this was probably the either the first or second. I don't specifically recall the order, but... I remember, however, as soon as I lit this one up, I, I was blown away and I there was no way in heck that we weren't choosing this blend. So once again, made down in the Dominican Republic uh, out of La Isla, it features an Ecuadorian Corojo wrapper over Dominican binder and then a triple Dominican filler. We've got Dominican HVA seed, Dominican Piloto Cubano and Dominican Criollo 98. Uh, this cigar and particularly why it stood out to me and why I knew I wanted it right away when I smoked it, it has this creamy sweetness to it that I really can't define. Um, it's just, I, I wish I could put it into words and I, I'm going to make a fool of myself here and say, it almost reminds me of like a milky cereal. Uh, I, I know that sounds dumb, but like there's this thing where you get the grain from the cereal as it kind of mixes in with the milk. And so you get this like grainy, milky cereal that it's not overly sweet, but it still brings this level of sweetness and creaminess. And I remember specifically getting that in this cigar. Um, there's other notes of citrus throughout it, a little bit of, you know, kind of cedar to it. Uh, and I just blown away. I'm so happy to see that uh, this cigar made it to the top five because it is one of my favorites uh, that we have done with uh, Enrique or one of my favorite Matilde cigars specifically. Obviously, we did this. Ooh, knocking the camera around here. That's how excited I am. There we go. Yeah, we're going on a dang uh, earthquake there. But it just, I don't know. This It's a cigar that will always stand out to me just because of how floored and blown away I was by the, by the blend as I smoke it or as I smoked it. You know, a lot of times you'll get a couple different test blends and, and all three or four or however many you may be smoking will be similar because there's just kind of subtle changes throughout them. You know, maybe a, a leaf here or a swap of the binder with a different binder. And, and a lot of times they'll be similar where 
you're really having to get into the nitty gritty to determine which of the blends is going to be the one that you select. So it's not always a clear cut. This is, this is the one. And I remember smoking this blend and, and it just going, this is it, you know, that change that we made, uh, for whatever that blend difference was. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I smoked it and I was just immediate. Yes. So shout out to Enrique over at Matilde Cigars. That blend came, came in at number five for the Cigar Club family of 2023. Coming in at number four, we've got a, a brand new cigar that was introduced in boxes or a brand new brand, rather, I should say, that was introduced in boxes this year. And that's going to be Wildfire, uh, specifically the Wildfire Revivalist. We shipped the Toro Vitola of this cigar uh, back in April of 2023. This is a brand that I remember smoking when they first came out. Uh, Jeremy McDonald is the uh, founder of Wildfire, Wildfire Cigars, and he's someone that I had followed in the industry for uh, quite a long time back in his days when he was working over at Small Bash Cigars. And I was just immediately excited to, to see him launch his own brand. I remember reading about it. I went out and I bought a five pack of uh, uh, I, I guess it was the the revivalist. I'm trying to think. I I know I've smoked I've smoked all of his blends now, but I do believe it was the the revivalist. It may have been the intro, uh, but it was one a brand that I knew I I wanted to get in boxes. Jeremy's a great guy. Uh, if you pay attention to any of the half wheel uh, PCA follows uh, as they kind of go around PCA, he's the the guy that always has the camper. He sleeps in his camper at PCA. Uh, just a really great guy to work with, and so. We brought in the Revivalist this year, as well as the Wanderer. Uh, but this one that came in at number four is the Revivalist Toro. Uh, it is uh, made in Nicaragua. It features uh, Nicaraguan and Mexican Claro wrapper with Nicaraguan binder and the Nicaraguan and Indonesian filler. Uh, Jeremy has worked in the cigar industry. I, I mentioned I followed him since he was working at Small Batch, but he's worked um, all across the industry. A worked with Robert Caldwell. He worked with uh, one or two other brands there. The, they escaped me at this moment, but he came out and just swung for the fences and hit home runs with every single release that he's had. Um, it, it wasn't one of those where I need to get blends out quickly and fast to kind of get market share or market space. No, he, he came out with blends that were intentional, uh, Vitolas that were intentional for the blends. Uh, and he's just done a fantastic job. I look forward to, to working with Jeremy through the rest of 2024 and continuing to bring uh, the other lines that we haven't shipped yet out of Wildfire Cigars. But that is really awesome to see a relatively new brand in terms of kind of the overall industry be able to break into the top 10 of Cigar Club. And, and honestly, things like this is why I love doing this episode because I get to see... Uh, new brands like this and, and get the exposure that they are very well deserving of. And I'm really glad to see that uh, when we bring in new manufacturers or new brands such as Wildfired Cigars, that it's resonating with y'all and y'all are enjoying these brands just as much as I do and just as much as we do here uh, over at Cigar Club. So coming in at number three is a new uh, I don't want to say a new brand because the person has been around for a good long time in the industry, uh, but that's going to be Tim Osner over at Osner Family Cigars. Uh, coming in at number three is the Osmer, Osner Bosphorus B50. Uh, this is a cigar that has been making waves um, in the cigar community, the cigar publications. Uh, this came in at um, Cigar Aficionado's top 25. I'm trying to remember. I don't believe I can recall. I think it was number 10, if memory serves. So uh, uh, no surprise to see it coming in at number three here. Uh, the B50 is the designation for the Vitola. Um, so that's going to be the the true across the Osner lineup is it'll be um, a, a number indicating the size. So the B50 was a four by 50 made in Nicaragua. It featured an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper an Ecuadorian Connecticut, and Nicaraguan Jalapa binder, and then it featured Nicaraguan filler. Uh, so Tim Osner is the uh, son of the legendary cigar maker, Kano Osner, who founded CAO Cigars. Tim worked uh, with CAO for a long time. He helped um, 
start, I think he was a co-founder of Crown Heads, uh, left the industry for a little bit, and then recently came back within uh, end of 2022, I believe, early 2023 with uh, Osner Family Cigars. The Bosphorus was the first line that he launched, uh, and then he's had subsequent new launches throughout the uh, the last year, year and a half. Uh, this was uh, one that I was kind of nervous about including just because it was a shorter Vitola at that four inch length, but uh, I'm glad to see it resonated with everyone because it certainly did with me. We even did an exclusive uh, of the Bosphorus with uh, Tim coming in at a different size. Uh, the size that we did for our exclusive was a Corona Extra, which was a little bit longer uh, at five and 5.6 by 48. So a little bit different Vitola that we did with our exclusive for that size, but that's how much we love the blend. We, we just were absolutely blown away. You all know that I love a good Corona, uh, but we wanted to have a little bit more. So that's why we went with a Corona extra just to make it a little bit different from that B50. Uh, but it's really great to see Tim here in the top three. I mean, this is amazing uh, five through three right now. Coming in at number two is none other than the Casa 1910 Chuchilo Parado. Uh, you all know our good friends over at Casa 1910 have been releasing some amazing cigars over the last several years. Uh, the Chuchilo Parado is by far my favorite Casa 1910 cigar. When I, uh, I think back to the November Casa 1910 experience that we had uh, that I was able to go on uh, down in Jalisco, Mexico, the literally we walk in and the first cigar that I grab is the Chuchilo Parado. It's just it's the first cigar that I ever smoked out of their line, out of their brand. To me, it's a Mexican Puro. Uh, it features a uh, Mexican Sumatra wrapper, Mexican San Andreas binder and filler. It's it's one of the most unique cigars that I've ever had the opportunity to smoke. And even the, to this day, after smoking multiple uh, Chuchilo Prados, it still has that exact same uniqueness that I remember from the very first time I, I smoked it. It's, it's hard to put into words why it's so unique. I think being a Mexican Puro and the first Mexican Puro that I knew that I had been smoking, and I still think it was the first Mexican Puro that I smoked back the, um, a few years ago, it, it's got this like floral citrusy elements to it, but then it's got like cashew, like roasted cashews, but then it transitions to these deep earth flavors. It's just a, a wonderful smoking experience. And we've shipped this cigar multiple times. We've shipped a lot of Casa 1910 um, over the years since we've been uh, partners up with them. And it's just, it's one that I will continually introduce to new smokers that, that join the Cigar Club family for the first time. Uh, and, you know, at least once a year, I'm going to interweave the Chuchilo Prado into boxes, uh, monthly boxes. So it's wonderful to see that uh, and uh, just cannot be uh, more excited for the guys over at Casa 1910 and what they have in store for uh, the next few years. And finally, Cigar Club family, the moment uh, you've all been waiting for, the number one cigar rated by you, the Cigar Club family of 2023, is none other than the Aganorsa Rare Leaf. Uh, this cigar is one that uh, we hadn't shipped previously. We shipped it back originally in July of 2023 obviously it was a cigar that i didn't ever expect to get in boxes just because it's it's more limited uh you know it's not as limited as supreme leaf per se which is kind of the creme de la creme of the uh agonorsa lineup in my opinion uh but the rare leaf is is its little brother so to speak it it's uh available usually year round i mean it's not necessarily too difficult to find but you know, it's one that I wanted to bring in for most of our Cigar Club family. And so I just, you know, I needed a lot and uh, I never thought that I could get it. So when I found out uh, that uh, Terrence had the ability to get us rare leaf for our monthly boxes, I knew immediately that I wanted to do it and locked it in. I remember talking to Terrence when we were at PCA and, and just how excited I was for this blend and, and uh, this lineup. And so we brought in the Robusto. It's a 5.2 by 52 Robusto, made in their Nicaraguan factory. Uh, it features Nicaraguan Jalapan wrapper, Nicaraguan Criollo binder, uh, and then Nicaraguan Corojo filler, and Nicaraguan Criollo 98. Uh, this is, to me, some of the best tobacco that Aganorsa has to offer. Uh, it's going to be tobacco that is hand-selected, specifically selected for their rare leaf cigar. 
and it shows. It, it's got a depth of flavor and complexity that certainly defines Aganorsa tobacco. So if you've ever smoked a cigar that features Aganorsa tobacco, it's pretty obvious that it's tobacco from Aganorsa. Uh, and the rare leaf tobacco that's selected for this cigar is just more complex. It has more body's not the right word, uh, oomph almost, uh, so to speak. And it, it is no surprise seeing this cigar come in at number one because it is just a damn good cigar. There's no other way about it. It's a box worthy cigar. If you've never smoked it, it's a blind box worthy cigar, assuming that you like Aganorsa tobacco. If you're not a fan of the tobacco that Aganorsa has and, and utilizes in their cigars and many other brands, Maybe it's not a blind purchase for you, but if you are a fan of Agonors and Tobacco and you haven't smoked Rare Leaf, go into it knowing you could buy a box of this cigar and know that you're going to enjoy it. Now, if you don't, I'm not paying for it, but <laughs> I would say the majority of people could buy this box uh, or a box of Agonors and Rare Leafs and enjoy it even if they've never smoked it before. So that is wonderful to see. Shout out to Agonorsa for coming in at number one uh, rated by the Cigar Club family for 2023, the Aganorsa Rare Leaf Robusto that we shipped back in July. Wow, what a top ten! I'm gonna I'm gonna run through it from the top ten. Coming in number ten, Lampert 1675 Azul. Coming in at number nine, Sereno Taino Heritage. Number eight, the Cigar Club exclusive that we did with Villager Cigars. Coming in at number seven, the Alec Bradley SCR Toro. Coming in at number six, the La Polina White Label. Coming in at number five, the exclusive we did with Matilde Cigars. Coming in at number four, the Wildfire Revivalist. Number three, the Osner Bosphorus B50. Number two, the Casa 1910 Chuchilo Parado. And then finally, coming in at number one of 2023, the Aganorsa a rare leaf. What a wonderful top 10. It's just, I, I, like I said, this is literally my favorite podcast to do because it's blind to me. You know, we ship a large amount of different cigars over the year. So it literally could be any of those cigars, you know, and, and the Matilda exclusive coming in number five is one that we shipped in 2022 or the end of 2022. Uh, and it's great to see it make the top 2023. You know, there's always kind of that issue where we ship cigars in December, but not everyone gets a chance to smoke them right away. Uh, holiday season, cold weather. And so we kind of delay this episode to middle of January. So some of those cigars get smoked, but obviously it's not always the case. And so it's great to see those cigars make uh, the, the top list uh, for the following year. Uh, but thank you all who go through and rate your cigars each month or each time you smoke them. Um, you know, those, those ratings don't just disappear in the ether. Uh, obviously, they're they're great to have for your own personal cigar journey, uh, but it, it's great to have those um, for us as well. You know, obviously, we use your ratings to make sure that we are continually shipping out um, amazing cigars each month, uh, and then we compile them for this episode each year and be able to announce what everyone's uh, or what the Cigar Club top twenty top ten for each year is. So, thank you all for um, taking the time and rating and putting in. Uh, the effort and the work that goes into ratings, even if you don't add any comments or, you, you know, you just give it a, a one through five star. You don't necessarily have to go through and, and fill in each category. It's, it is for you at the end of the day, uh, but we do appreciate all the time uh, that you spend filling out uh, the ratings. So let's jump in. We do have a question of the show. Uh, what region do you think makes the best cigars in the world? Uh, is it still Cuba? Uh, you know, and this is a great question because it's it's subjective, right? So my opinion is going to be different than uh, Ramsey's opinion or Jeff's opinion or or anyone listening to the podcast's opinion. For me, do I think it's still Cuba? No. And I don't think it's been Cuba for the last several years. Uh, specifically, I would say probably around 2020, 2019, I think COVID pushed Cuba out entirely. Uh, but I think the trend was was turning away from Cuba. Now, there are obviously people that only smoke Cuban cigars. You still have a large Cuban cigar dominance outside of the United States as well. Obviously, the United States can't get Cuban cigars, so 
that's a big factor. But a lot of the Asian market, uh, Cubans still dominate. The European market for a long time was dominated by Cubans. But as the Cuban market dries up, for a lack of better word, and is more scarce, the European market is now seeing a large trend in the shift to New World cigars. So New World would be outside of Cuba. For me, for the longest time, especially in the beginning of my cigar smoking journey, I would say Nicaragua was, to me, the best producer of cigars in the world. Um, this was around 2016. And that was just because I fell in love with Nicaraguan tobacco. At the time, it was the tobacco that brought me back into the cigar smoking world and, and really kick-started my cigar smoking journey. So it was Nicaraguan. And then over the last few years, as I started to smoke more Dominican tobacco, it started to shift. And I think we are now seeing Dominican tobacco be on the same level as Nicaraguan. So for me, in short, Nicaragua and Dominican are the two best cigar or tobacco producing regions in the world. And I think they are the two regions that make the best cigars. So the manufacturers that utilize uh, Dominican and Nicaraguan tobacco are producing the best cigars. Now, that's not to say that someone may completely disagree and say, no, I think Costa Rica, which is a, an up and comer in the cigar world, is producing the best cigars, or maybe they find Honduran tobacco tends to be the best. So it is subjective at the end of the day. Uh, but I think it would be, uh, I think a lot of people would agree that some of their favorite cigars come out, come out of Nicaraguan or the Dominican Republic. But I think Cuba is certainly no longer the best producer. I don't think they've been the best producer of tobacco for the last several years. And I don't think we are going to see a resurgence of Cuban tobacco that will surpass Nicaragua and Dominican. I don't think it will ever get back to the heyday of the you know early 90s of some of the best Cuban cigars that I think were made. Um, obviously, that's subjective as well, but I do not believe it will ever regain uh, the best producer over Nicaraguan or uh, Dominican tobacco ever, ever again, that is. So final update here before we get into the giveaway for the show, La Fine is smoking absolutely beautiful. Uh, I do admit that while it's fantastic with just straight black coffee, the condensing, condensed sweet milk espresso combination that we originally smoked this blend with uh, that Lorenzo starts his morning out with uh, over at HVC Cigars is certainly the better of the two pairings. The sweetened condensed milk adds to that dolce de leche creamy sweetness that I talked about earlier and kind of elevates it even further. And so if I was capable of making it anywhere near as good as Lorenzo would, that would be my go-to pairing with a cigar. <clears throat> uh, otherwise, I would say maybe like a, a a whole milk latte would be really, really good here as well. Uh, but obviously outside of coffee, if maybe you're not a coffee drinker, Diet Coke's going to go really good with this. Dr. Pepper, if you prefer uh, non-alcoholic pairings. Otherwise, a dark red wine would be wonderful. I'm thinking like a steak meal with a good burgundy or Bordeaux, and then you jump back outside and finish off that glass of wine or bottle. Uh, lighting up La Fine will be the perfect end to your night. Wow, well, we're going to tie into the name into uh, into that one there. But let's go ahead and uh, give out a giveaway here. Uh, so for today's episode, we're going to be giving away our 2023 Customs Sampler. So this will include one of each release of 2023. So it'll be six cigars total. Uh, it will feature La Fine. And um, for the question, what cigar did you smoke this year that wasn't on the top 10 list? Uh, but was one of your favorite sticks of 2023 that we shipped out. So let us know in the comment below uh, if you had a cigar that didn't make the top 10 here that we sent out. Uh, and then from that, we'll select a winner to send out our 2023 custom sampler. Well, that's it, folks, here. I, I appreciate you all. Like I, get, like I said earlier, I really appreciate all the time and effort you put into rating the cigars that you receive. Uh, it really does mean the world to us. Uh, but thank you all for joining us on another episode of the Scalo S Wow. Add that one to the blooper reel. Thank you all for joining us for another episode of the Cigar Club podcast. I'm Pew. And until next time, happy smoking.